take a look, um, kind of a reader's digest of some of the tools, uh, benefits, and features that we have in our Image Pro 3D module. So first, we have a lot of file formats that are available, um, 50 plus um, that are available, in, uh, including the microscope, um, you know, the proprietary formats that they have. Uh, we read those right in and we extract out all the channels, magnification times, e-spacing, um, calibrations and all that, which is really nice. Some of the import, um, uh, some of the file formats uh, are brought in as an import, um, and specifically this LAF file format is kind of nice in that if you have several image sets within it, um, you can um, uh, just extract just that Im image set that you're uh, interested in looking at. One of the um, one of the biggest thing that comes up usually when people start looking at Image Pro 3D um, is they'll say something like, well, when I bring my images in, they don't look like I would expect them to. Maybe they're low res and they don't look good. Well, one of the things you have to remember is um, the subsampling presets. Um, and you'll find these under the File Options dialog. And this is something that you can set. And keep in mind that Image Pro sets these based on the performance of your system. Um, so if you have a really high-end system, more than likely the sample um, sampling presets can be set higher so that when you bring your data sets in, they won't be as decimated um, as if you had maybe a lower performance system, okay? And I'll show how that looks uh, when we take a look at the software itself. Um, but that's really important. Um, the actual visualization of the sam subsampling is um, is uh, available on the ribbon as well as when you open up the reload dialog, and um, and you'll actually see it on the <clears throat> a pop-up window, a tooltip that pops up uh, when you open up an image and there is some subsampling that's occurring. Um, this is a nice mode, dark mode, if you're doing um, you know biolog biological. Um, fluorescence-based um, 3D rendering, um, having a dark background is kind of nice, easy on the eyes, um, and that can easily be changed um, on the fly uh, to go back and forth from a bright desktop to a dark desktop. Um, keep in mind, these are really nice for us, um, things like sending back feedback, if you've got stuff going on, um, reporting a problem. Um, or any feature requests, keep those in mind. We really appreciate those. Engineering likes to get the, um, you know, stay on top of any kind of bugs that may come up. Um, we hardly see them, but we do see them occasionally, and then engineering will jump right on those and, and get things um, fixed up. Um, I also wanted to point out while we're here in this um, help file, um, which is the pull down right next to the help, um, this is where you can retrieve your Welcome to Image Pro um, uh, tab on the um, image tab in the in the center of the desktop. If you close that, remember that's the places where you can open images, save images, see your most recent. Um, that's also where the training resources are. Um, so it's a really great tab to have available. Um, and then this is, uh, again, sometimes when there's licensing issues, this is the place where we'll point you um, if you're inside the software under the help. Uh, where we need to go to the license administration to enter a UAC or something to that effect. So, um, okay, next. Um, some other things that are part of Image Pro uh, in the 3D that help um, make your data sets just stand out that much better, um, calibrated grid views. Um, we have um, axes, um, indicators, which will help the um, user and, and the person visualizing your data to know, you know, what the orientation actually is. Um, uh, calibration um, scale bars actually let them know kind of what the scale of the um, render is so they can get an idea of what, what kind of magnification we're looking at and different ways of controlling the data sets using wheels or grabbing them with the, um, uh, the mouse and, and rotating. Some other new options, um, you can see some of these, um, you know, adding casting shadows, again, using the grid, um, the grid references. Um, if you've got a, a data set that has some issues, um, maybe during the ZStack there's been some misalignment, things like that, we have a really powerful tool under the Process tab and it's called Align, and there's a really nice one that allows you to choose a small region of interest and say Align by Feature, and very quickly your data set can be um, aligned very nicely, um, and uh, it's a very, very nice tool. As you're bringing in different data sets, 
um, if they're not in a data set format um, where the you know wavelength uh, calibration z step time and things like that if they're not um, defined um, if they're just a series of TIFF images in a folder, we very easily and conveniently can bring in those images and uh, you can specify, again, all the different calibrations um, for the X, Y, and Z spacing, what the wavelength is, uh, what the time, uh, time component represents and things like that. So a really nice set builder. This is, uh, this is the alignment again, but in addition to alignment, we have normalization. Um, again, there can be uneven lighting or irregularities throughout the Z stack and normalization helps to produce um, really nice images. Um, here's an example of alignment and normalization correction. You can see these images are nicely homogeneous and um, they look very, very nice. So um, having a nice aligned data set and normalized data set helps for visualization and accurate measurements also. Um, comparing, um, again, these are the types of things, again, that we can make measurements with. Um, so we can segment by intensities, filter objects, classify them so we can see how many objects fit within a certain classification. Um, using the tools like size and shape, object count, um, and um, in, like we have in the 2D modules, um, we have object splitting and merging. We can name objects and uh, eliminate objects either on borders or filter them based on, you know, size or shape or any of the parameters that you might want to filter based on. We do have a nice, powerful um, segmentation tool in uh, the 3D module, which allows for a smart segmentation integration into the segmentation process. Um, and uh, just simply it works by the user defining certain regions and then those outlines can be propagated either manually uh, throughout the Z stack or if there's a pretty good signal to noise and, and the um, outline is, is fairly well defined, you can actually do an automated um, Z propagation. And if you remember, this is kind of an example of the isosurface recreation um, where you've specified, you know, half a dozen neurons here and then trace them automatically through the Z stack. And here's another view of that. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, and in addition to um, rendering and doing, you know, volumetric measurements, um, again, like in 2D, we can make manual measurements, too, in the 3D space where we can make lines, lengths, areas, and things like that. Um, and, um, and that's very powerful. We can measure, again, making exactly the type of measurement that you want to make um, in the 3D world. Um, measuring along surfaces from points to points, distances from certain relative planes, measuring angles and all these kind of good things. So, so these are all measurements that we can kind of keep in mind that we're able to do uh, with the Image Pro 3 uh, module running within the Image Pro version 10 software. Um, the output, um, again, kind of in 2D, we can kind of modify the view, make it very um, uh, very specific as to the type of view of data that you want to have and uh, then export that out to Excel or send it out to our data collector um, within Image Pro. It's kind of like having an Excel spreadsheet on steroids within Image Pro. Um, or send it out to custom reports. Um, so anyway, we have um, documentation um, uh, capabilities too. Within the actual visualization, um, you know, we have full control over objects and, and uh, the volumes themselves, channel controls, color, assigning specific colors based on, you know, the fluorescent fluorochrome emission, things like that. Lighting conditions, you'll see in a little bit here uh, how important lighting is. Um, even for the 3D object when it's rendered, um, helps you to, to really visualize what's going on, um, especially sometimes like within a concave surface. Um, it can be very, very powerful. Um, 3D clipping planes uh, can be added to any 3D data, and um, you can see on the right-hand side here where you can have 3D uh, visualization, uh, uh, um, uh, provide some orthogonal planes um, or perpendicular planes, um, and then there's a lot of, of options as far as how those different planes are being displayed. Um, as far as animations, pretty simple to, to create these. You basically just display the view that you want to see, and you click a button, and it, and it records that uh, current position. And then as you record more and more positions um, and then play that back, um, the software will interpret, interpolate the, the various views and insert frames there also. 
Um, when you publish them, you can create these AVIs, Windows Movie File Formats, or things like MP4s, which is a very common movie format. Um, and then up on our website, um, we have links to some of the you know 3D movies and animations and uh, quantitation things that we've done. And those are you can use those uh, and have access to those also. Thank you very much.